The Canadian Healthy Oceans Network is a partnership of about 65 different scientists from across Canada. There are 15 universities, and the Natural Sciences and Engineering Research Council, along with DFO, are the primary sponsors. And the idea of the program is to try and create knowledge for sustainable management of the oceans. And that's a really complicated problem. Uh, in the past, we've really focused on a very few species, but now we recognize that we need to be much broader in our thinking and to really come at it with an ecosystem approach. And so that makes the question a lot more difficult because we need a lot more information than we used to. And that's why it's really so critical that we bring together all these people. After all, Canada has uh, three oceans, the uh, Pacific, the Arctic, and the Atlantic. We have a very thin research community that's spread across the country. And we also have a bilingual country that's French and English. And so trying to communicate all this information and to pull it all together requires a really uh, network type approach. And that's what we're trying to do with the Canadian Healthy Oceans Network. Canadian Healthy Oceans brings to DFO the capability to entrain a group of young scientists from across the country, from a number of Canadian universities, and we bring them together to work on problems using multidisciplinary approaches. Through five years, we'll have trained probably 50 new marine scientists on CONI. CONI gives us students a wealth of opportunity. Through the network, we have access to some of Canada's leading marine scientists. We also have a platform to interact with other students from all across Canada, and we also have access to some of the newest and most advanced scientific tools and technologies. I think with our training and experiences, CONI students are going to be an invaluable asset to the future of marine sciences. To me, CONI means quite a bit. It gave me an opportunity to do research on two of Canada's coastlines. It's been a fantastic way to meet people. I'm collaborating with other students in order to conduct my research. Well, CONI gave me the opportunity to take part on a really great cruise like this and to study the ocean directly in the field. Everything is pretty exciting. It's uh, nice to uh, meet some new people, seeing the whales and getting some mud from uh, 3,000 meters deep. It's pretty rare to be able to sample in very deep environment. So this is a great opportunity. Alors, je suis vraiment très excitée aujourd'hui. On a euh... On a rapatrié le, le, premier, le premier substrat de colonisation qui est allé si profondément. Après quatre ans, c'est quand même une, une très grande réalisation pour l'équipe qu'on a ici. Donc, je suis très contente. Il y a beaucoup de travail qui s'en vient, mais je suis très contente de, de faire partie de, de cette expérience. I think the best experience being on a Coney cruise is to get an opportunity to work within the environment that you're interested in you know, as compared to working just inside a laboratory in your university. I also get to be out here with other scientists who are studying different things with this CONI program. So it's really cool getting to work with different people who are, you know, in a different part of the sciences, but it's all related and it's really nice getting to see that. Every CONI student works extremely hard on their piece of the puzzle. We work on our projects for years and we're all very proud and committed to them. Each one of us has a passion for what we do. When CONI students get together at a network meeting or on cruises, we're all very excited about our research. So for example, I got to go at the bottom of the ocean last summer at 1,500 meters and I got to see hydrothermal vents, it was really exciting. For many of us, this is our dream job. You know, everyone wanted to grow up to be a marine biologist at some point. When I was younger, I saw an IMAX movie. It was with a submarine, and they said that most of the time that they were going to sample in the deep sea, they were finding some new species. They also mentioned that 99% of the deep sea is not discovered yet, so I thought that if only 1% was known, there is a lot that I can study. What I find the most exciting in my work is that, in particular with the city of Rosette, we can have deep échantillons and, in particular, in zones that have never been échantillonnées. 
Donc euh, moi ce qui m'intéresse aussi c'est de voir les communautés qui sont présentes à des profondeurs jamais explorées et à l'aide de la biologie moléculaire voir quelles sont ces espèces là. We were sitting on this ship and lowering this piece of machinery into the ocean. We would drop it a couple hundred meters to the ocean floor and pick up some of that habitat and bring it right back up to the surface. Out here I get to see lots of diversity of seabirds, what it's like when they're foraging and all the different kinds of habitat they're using. Alors ce que j'ai derrière moi, c'est un submersible qu'on appelle le Ropa. C'est un submersible canadien qui nous permet d'aller très profondément dans l'océan, donc euh, sur la côte continentale, mais aussi plus loin, et euh, où les humains, à cause des conditions physiologiques, ne pourraient pas nécessairement aller. Donc ce qu'on fait, c'est qu'on filme euh, proche du fond et on analyse les, an les espèces qui sont là, euh, quel genre de communauté qu'on retrouve dans les, les fonds marins profonds au Canada. My work helps to get a better understanding of how the benthic organisms react to disturbances, for example. It helps to develop a better management practice for these environments. My part in the Coney project will help contribute to conservation of the marine habitats because we're looking at seabirds and their diversity and abundance all throughout the Gulf of Maine. That can be used in combination with all the data on the benthic systems and the pelagic systems. That way we can find hotspots in different important areas that can become marine protected areas. My research is about marine protected area design and um, right now we are thinking of using marine biodiversity as parameter and we'll see on what scale we can actually explore that. It could be possible that we can explore it right from the Arctic all the way down to the Scotian Shelf in the Atlantic Ocean. In doing their work and completing their research projects, a lot of the students will get experiences in Canadian government laboratories, get a first-hand understanding of how they might apply their science skills in a, in a government science setting. And all of that makes for a great success story for Canadian marine science. Don't show this. <laughs>